Are you a 3D printing beginner and you want to find a good option for your first printer? Are you looking for a low price printer that prints high quality prints? Hey guys, I'm Kellen from CIR and this is my review of the Creality Ender 3 Pro. But before we begin, I would just like to mention that I do have a second channel, CIR Unfiltered, and there will be an end card at the end of this video that you can go check out that channel or you can check it out just by going to the link in the description. But obviously that's not what you're here for, you're here for the review, so let's just get started. Let's first talk about what you get inside the box. First, you get this whole printer, but you do not get this spool, a little more on that later. You get everything that's in this box, so a lot of foam, this cord to connect to your power bank, some tools that help you put it together, very convenient, some uh, instructions, some other tools, custom customizable things such as different nozzle tips, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It comes in this massive box. And as you can probably tell from the shape of the box, you have to put it together. It takes about an hour, especially if you've never done it before, but the instructions should help out a lot. Though if you need more help assembling it, I believe there are more instructions on the website, and I'm sure there's some videos on YouTube where you can, you can find to assemble the printer. So if you need help assembling this, then you can obviously look that up. I did not do a build video of this because when I got it, I just wanted to use it immediately. So. Oh, and before I move on from what's in the box, I just want to mention probably the two most important tools. First is the scraper, if your stuff gets stuck to this bed, which usually it doesn't, but more on the bed later. This, this thing will help you get it off, but you can also get stuck on filament off that may have not come off with the print whenever you took it off. So the scraper is very nice, very convenient. Along with that, you get an 8GB SD card and a USB to SD card reader, which is very important if you want to print anything other than the three prints that it gives you on the card. Do not lose any of these parts. These are all very important and all very useful. Pretty much everything else that I mentioned, except for the printer, of course, you can lose and you'll be okay. But please do not lose the USB to SD card reader, the SD card or the scraper. Those are probably your most important tools. And the printer also comes with about 100 grams of filament, which if you don't know, is not really all that much, but it can help you print the prints that they give you on the SD card. Now let's talk about the printer itself and what's already attached to it. First of all, you get this magnetic bed here, which you can clearly take off the bed and you can bend it and take stuff off. Now, as you can see, I've uh, damaged it, but I'm getting some new ones today. And on that note, I'd like to mention that it's actually very easy to get replacement beds if you mess it up like me. You can find them on Amazon for, I think, $13, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. But this thing is very useful, especially when you get a print, it sticks to the bed, all you have to do is bend it and it'll come right off. And of course, if it doesn't come right off, you just use the scraper and take it off. Not a big deal. The printer also has a, well actually, let me, if I turn the printer on, I can show off a few more things. Give it a sec. It takes a, just a second to boot up. But as you can tell, the fans turn on right away, which is good because printers get very hot if you don't know. And let's just get started with some of the stuff that it has. I'm gonna take this camera real quick. First of all, you have a nice lit up screen that you can control very easily just with this knob. You can press down to select. You can turn it to change your, change what you want to select. And it also has a lot of nice little information like how hot the nozzle is, how hot the bed is. This. This little line here is very important, and I think the most important while you're printing. It'll tell you what, how long it's been printing and what percentage it's done with, which is really convenient. X, Y, and Z, I'll tell you about where the nozzle is, which is nice. Mine should be at 000 right now because I pressed the auto home, which if you don't know, auto home is very important. What it does is it's basically where the printer goes whenever you first start a print. It just moves back. Just like that. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, the, the printer is very loud, so I would not recommend having it in your bedroom or something like I do right now, because it gets very noisy, especially when all these fans turn on, and you just heard it auto home, and that stuff, if it just keeps going for hours while you're trying to sleep, you're not gonna be able to sleep while it's right next to you. Along with this, this is the power bank, the off and on, plugged into the wall. Well, actually, I have an extension cord that goes down there, but. It, regardless, it's plugged into the wall. If it's not, it won't work, obviously, because you don't have power. This QR code, I believe, goes to their website, but I don't think I've actually used it. Here's the nozzle. Right now, I have the 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it because I just don't really want to change it. It works just fine. These knobs down here are used for leveling the bed. 
And up here is a filament spool holder. As you can see, you just screw that on, you put your massive spool on top, and then it feeds through here, goes through this tube, gets heated up, and printed onto the bed. Okay, I got some of the prints that I've printed on this printer that are actually pretty good overall. There are a couple that I'd like to show off, just to show off some of the problems that I've had with the printer, but we'll get to that in a second. First of all, the printer comes with three prints by default. It comes with this pig, it comes with this little dog, and it comes with this like Jap, I believe, Chinese or Jap, I think it's Chinese cat, because Creality is a Chinese company, so it should be a Chinese cat, holding a coin and holding, I think, some sort of like scripture or something up. But all three of these have turned out really nice. I'll get close ups of them in just a second to show off. They're all pretty well detailed. And the only problem is this one took like, the pig took like six hours to print. The dog, oh no, the pig actually took eight hours. The dog took five and the cat took like six. And while yes, all of them are very high quality prints, that is just a ridiculously long time for like basic prints that they give to you. It just seems kind of weird, especially considering how small they are. But I will say the details on these are very, very, very good. And I really like it. All right, now moving on to some of the custom prints I've done. First of all is this gear bearing by Emmett, which uh, I actually had a lot of trouble printing this one properly. And even now it's not exactly perfect. Okay, so this is supposed to be a gear bearing, which you just kind of hold in the middle and you're supposed to just like flick the outside and it spins, kind of like a fidget spinner. Yeah, I know, but um, it doesn't exactly work. This may be due to the printer printing too fast or some other factors that I have had trouble with, with other items, but if I do put this Allen wrench in the middle and spin it, you can see it all working, which shows me that my printer can print this one properly, it just kind of doesn't. So this is kind of cool, but I think this is better for some higher end printers that can print in better detail without messing up as much, or that could just be some of the settings that I could change and then I print a perfect one, but I don't know. This one turned out okay. One of the first custom models I printed was this massive Baby Yoda, but as you might be able to see, especially in the close-up, uh, there are some huge flaws with this. First of all, the bottom is actually uneven if, as I spin it around, though this was due to something unsticking while I was printing, which kind of sucks. But the main thing you can see is right here on its body, right here on its arm, and multiple spots on its head, the layers shifted. And that's a huge problem I've had with this printer, is this little problem called layer shift. Now there are ways to prevent this. In your slicing software, which I might make a separate video on later if you guys want, in the slicing software you can add a Z-hop, which basically before the nozzle moves to a different area of the print, it'll like move up just a bit to avoid collisions. You can tighten the belts on your printer, like this one that moves the nozzle back and forth, or this one that moves the bed back and forth. And there are some other fixes, just like if your G-code file is bad, it'll do that. But basically I need to tweak this printer a lot. The biggest thing about 3D printing for me is there is a lot of tweaking and a lot of fine tuning you have to do to get your prints just right. These early prints were all really good, but then once I started tweaking it too much, they haven't been quite as nice. But I have, I have had some nice custom prints, like this Longhorn. It's very simple, it's just a tall Longhorn. This took a really long time to print, like longer than it should have. But overall, it's really nice, except for the bottom, but that's because of a lump on the bottom I created one time while adjusting the bed. That was not a good, that was not a good job by me, but that Longhorn turned out pretty nice. And then while I was searching for a different kind of file, I came across this. This is a Pikachu with a Magikarp face. Why I printed it is beyond me, but here it is. As you can see by the ears, it is sliced, and you can also see where the filament has not fully come off from the supports. Which, sure, I could sand it down, but I really wish that the supports would just come off cleaner. But those are pretty much all the prints I wanted to show off. I printed a few more things, like I tried printing this big fish statue, but when I got home, it was just, it shifted the layers over so much that by the time it was at the top, it just started spewing filament everywhere and I was really mad. And there were some other designs that were similar to this gear bearing that I really wanted to print, but they just did not work. So it's too bad that those didn't work. But overall, all of these models are pretty good to some extent. And some of them also show the limitations of this printer. Now, before I give my final thoughts on this printer, I'd like to mention that this thing is made to print PLA, which is the plastic that all of these models are made out of, and ABS, which I personally don't want to print because PLA is just better in almost every way. But overall, I think it does a pretty good job with PLA. It actually has specific modes in, in on the screen to print in PLA and ABS, which is why I say those are probably the two prints it's made for. So. I have seen people print this in the flexible rubber filament. It's either TPU or TPE. 
one of the two, but I can't, I cannot remember right now. Either way, if I get a chance to print with flexible filament, I'll be sure to make a video on that when I get some cool prints. But for now, all I have is PLA. Along with mentioning that it only prints in certain kinds of plastic, I should probably mention some of the problems I've had. So some of the biggest problems I've had with this printer is, first of all, the layer shifts, which I mentioned, as very evident on this Baby Yoda. You can see all the slices. You can see where the layers shifted in a bad way. But the reasons for that, I feel like I have fixed and hopefully in the future, I'll print less stuff that shifts the top layer or like the middle layer or anything like that. That's That one's not too hard to fix. The other problem I had was with the wiring of this printer. So in the first couple of days I had it, it um it's auto home would go to this corner, right? But it wouldn't go down and just move up a little bit and just sit there. And then you press auto home again, it would go to this corner and just move up a little bit more from where it was from. Now this I figured out is just a wiring issue. If you unplug the printer, leave it and then plug it back in, it usually works. But if not, the easiest way to detect this problem is to go to the screen and go to the move axis setting inside prepare. And you can just see if you can actually move Z down. If you can't move your Z axis down, that means your wiring is messed up. So what I did was I unplugged every single wire attached to the nozzle, plugged them back in and it worked just fine. And one last thing I'd like to mention is these knobs here are for bed leveling. If your bed's not even, you can't print a good print. So if you twist these knobs down here, you can make the bed go up and down each corner. And then as long as everything is level, it should print a good print. I'll be sure to make separate videos on all of these different concepts like layer shifts, bed leveling, etc. all sorts of tinkering with your 3D printer kind of videos, but that is for another time. So overall, this printer I would say is a seven out of 10. It is a great beginner's choice with a price point of only $250, which if you don't know is extremely cheap in the 3D printing world. And I think it's great for beginners, but it does seem to have some major flaws. It has some issues printing super detailed stuff, which could just be me, but I've seen people print really detailed and really nice stuff on this printer before, so I have no doubt that you can print some of the really nice, very detailed models. Maybe I'm just getting unlucky, I don't know, but overall, 7 out of 10, this is a great beginner printer and I would highly recommend it for anyone who wants to get into 3D printing. With that being said, this is the end of my review. I'm Callum from CIR and I will be seeing you guys in the next video.